Hi, in this lecture video, we will continue discussing the movement of electrons in chemical reactions. And again, we have seen this already, that all chemical reactions share one common principle, which is basically the transfer of electron for better stability. And so as a chemical reaction is happening, it is really important that we recognize some of the basic pattern how electrons move. And by understanding and recognizing this pattern or this rule, we'll be able to predict and understand chemical reaction. And on this video, our emphasis is basically on the nucleophile and electrophile types of reaction. And this is a very, very big and important types of reaction that we will see here in organic chemistry. Send the electron acceptor is the carbon. And again, here, Will be the movement of the electrons in a nucleophile and electrophile types of reaction. The electron source is basically a lone pair of electrons on any atom. And it can also be electron in pi bond as well, making pi bonds such as double and triple bond are rich in electron. So that is also another source of electron. And that makes up the electron donor. And the electron donor would then move to the other sites that is serving as the electron acceptor. And the electron acceptor are basically atom that bearing a fully or a partially positive charge. And in this case, again, our well, emphasis is on the carbon. So we are discussing the nucleophile and electrophile types of reaction. And just to give a few examples, when a carbon is fully positive, it is a great electron acceptor then anything very positive will be able to attract electrons, then electrons are negative. And we can also have other functional groups in which the carbon is only partially positive. So here in this case right here, due to the difference in electronegativity between the carbon and the oxygen, this oxygen is inductively pulling an electron away from the carbon, making this carbon right here partially positive. And therefore, this partial positive carbon can also accept electron as well. And in another example, let's say we have a carbon bonding to an electronegative atom. So X here is an electronegative atom, such as the halogen. So something that is electronegative. So this can also inductively pull an electron away from the carbon making this carbon right here become partially positive. And that is also a good electron acceptor. So overall, an electron acceptor is referred to as the electrophile. And the electron-rich substance where we would, where electron would be started out in a chemical reaction, or the electron source, this E term the nucleophile. In nearly every chapter of organic reaction that we'll be discussing later, it involves these types of reaction right here, where the electrons are started moving from the nucleophile uh, and are then donated into the electrophile. So now let's define the nucleophile and the electrophile. The nucleophile are basically an electron-rich center or atom. And in fact, the term nucleophile means nuclear lover. And because they love, so they love electrons because they are electron-rich. So something that is electron-rich would be the nucleophile. Then electron-rich substances love the nucleus and therefore the term nucleophile. And in chemical reaction, the nucleophile donates electron. So electron will start moving from the nucleophile in a chemical reaction. And thus it's really important that we can identify which sites or which center of the nucleophile in a chemical substance. And the less stable the electrons are in the nucleophile, the more willing, more willing the substance would be in donating the electron. And therefore, that would make up or make it a stronger nucleophile or the more reactive nucleophile. 
And again, we need to be able to identify the nucleophilic sites in an organic molecule and be able to assess their stability. And recall, the strength or the stability of the nucleophile can be determined or explained by using aerial and also pKa of the conjugate acid as well. So these are some of the two of the we have learned already how to determine the stability of a set of electrons. And that can also translate to knowing how reactive the nucleophile will be. So let's go over a few examples of sites or atom or species that will be considered as nucleophile. So first, anything with the negative charge atom would make a good nucleophile. For example, oxygen the negative, nitrogen the negative, and carbon the negative. So in this case right here, again, it is actually the electron on this atom that are nucleophilic, not the char. The char does tell us that this atom right here are rich in electron, but in the end, the electron actually locate in the orbital. So make sure we pay attention to the lone pair of electron on all of this atom. And here in this case right here, so we have three different species that all carry a negative char. So this would make them a great nucleophile. And between the three, one would be more nucleophilic than the other. And here in this case right here, a carbon with a negative char. This compared to the oxygen and nitrogen that are also negative, this would then be the strongest nucleophile. NUC stands for nucleophile, or short for nucleophile. And the reason why is because in this case right here, when a carbon is negative, this is least stable. And because this is least stable, it is more willing to donate electron, and therefore become more reactive. So that go back to this relationship right here that we have discussed. And make sure you understand this relationship. So the less stable, the nucleophile, or the nucleophilic site, whether it is an atoms or a site, then the more reactive it will be. So therefore, when identifying sites of nucleophile, we need to be looking for atom that carry the negative charge. And second, lone pair of electron can also be good nucleophile as well. So this is a basic lone pair of electron on neutral atom. And clearly we can then see that the lone pair on the neutral atom are not as electron rich compared to other, com to other species that have the negative charge. However, they can still be good nucleophile. Okay, so here in this case right here, the oxygen have a lone pair of electron on it, and so is the nitrogen. So this would also make this uh, reactive as nucleophile as well. And here, in this case right here, between these two, this one, nitrogen, would then be more reactive as nucleophile compared to oxygen than in neutral. And the reason why is because the nitrogen is basically less electronegative. And the fact that it is less electronegative means that it is more willing to donate electron. More willing and therefore make it more reactive. And in the previous example, we would then see it follow the same trend. Carbon the negative would be better nucleophile compared to nitrogen. And nitrogen would then be better nucleophile compared to oxygen. And again, all of these have similar charges. So that's how we can compare them. And the third site of nucleophile would then be pi electron. So pi electrons are found in double and triple bond. And they can also be nucleophile as well. And the reason why is because they are rich in electron. For example, in the pi bond, where, where there is, in this case right here, this is a double bond, so we have two electrons in here. So this make up an electron rich region, and therefore it can serve as a nucleophile. Now as we can imagine, that the pi electron in the double and triple bond will not be as rich in terms of electron density compared to an oxygen or nitrogen or carbon that are negative. So therefore they will not be reactive as nucleophile compared to the other example, but by themselves they can also be nucleophile. And similarly, 
a benzene. Benzene can also be nu good nucleophile as well. And the reason why is because they have up to six electrons in the ring, in this enclosed ring. So that makes them also nucleophilic as well. And there will be a chapter that we will dedicate to later in which we will discuss the chemical reaction of benzene as the nucleophile. And now, let's go over the electrophile. So electrophile, by definition, they are basically electron deficient center. And the term electrophile refer to electron lover or it means electron lover. And because the electron lovers, they it because they carry a positive charge on them. So that's why that they would be the electron lover. So again, anything that will be electron pool because they are positively positive, that would make up the good electrophile. And in chemical reaction, the electrophile accepts electron or get attacked by electron from the nucleophile. So therefore, it is also very important that we are able to determine the electrophilic sites in an organic molecule. So how do we how do we identify substances that would be good electrophile? Here are a few examples. First, carbocation. Carbocation are basically very, very powerful electrophile because the carbon is fully positive and it also has an empty orbital in it. So it, technically, there's really nothing that loves electron more than a carbocation. So here's an example right here. When we have a carbocation, a carbon is carrying, it, it having an empty p orbital, and this is basically the site that can be used to accept electron. And another example: substances in which a carbon is carrying a partially positive charge due to the inductive effects. So all carbon connecting to the electronegative atom would also be electrophilic as well. For an example, in this molecule right here, we have a carbon bonding to a chlorine. And because the chlorine can inductively withdraw electron away from the carbon due to high electronegativity, that would then create a partial positive charge on this carbon, making this partial positive carbon right here also a good electrophile. And another example, here is a carbonyl. In a carbonyl, where the carbon and oxygen are double bonded, again, the oxygen can withdraw electron from the carbon inductively, making this carbon right here becoming partially positive. So therefore, this carbon right here would also be a good electrophile. And in the end, the strength of the electrophile can also be explained by area, which we will discuss in the next video. So now, let's go over a few examples to make sure we know how to identify the nucleophilic and electrophilic centers in a given organic molecule. And if there's multiple of those centers, we need to be able to rank them and determine which, which of them will be most or least reactive. So in the first example, molecule A. So given this structure here, first, we need to be able to realize and see that the oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons on it. Recognizing this lone pair of electrons is really important because lone pairs should immediately tell us that the atom with the lone pair of electrons is rich in electron. So here in this case, there's a one site that is rich in electron. And because this is rich in electron, it will then make this oxygen right here a good nucleophile or maybe a decent nucleophile. And also, so basically, this would then be nucleophile right here. And also, similarly, we see here this is a double bond. And again, in the double bond, we see there will be two pi electrons in here. And overall, it makes this site right here rich in electron. So this can also serve as a nucleophile as well. And now, let's now analyze for electron deficiency or the electrophilic center in this molecule. And again, 
electrophilic center are basically the area in or the atom in the molecule that are partially positive, so they love electron. So here in this case right here, we can see due to electronegativity, the oxygen inductively pull electron away from the carbon and the oxygen. And that will then make this hydrogen and this carbon right here becoming partial positive. So there you go. These are the two sites in this molecule right here that can serve as a good electrophile. And now let's rank them. So here in this case right here, what, which site will be the most nucleophilic and which site will then be the most electrophilic? So let's rank the nucleophile first. So here in this case, we have pi electron in a p orbital or pi electron in here versus electron here in the lone pair. Between these two sites of nucleophile, which site will be more reactive? And the answer, it would then be the lone pair of electron. So lone pair of electron has up to two electrons in them that locate on only one orbital. Versus in a pi bond, we can then see that there are two orbitals and there are two electrons in them, but electrons are being shared between these two orbitals from this carbon and this carbon. And because of it, the electron density on the pi bond would then not be at rich compared to electron on the oxygen. So therefore, of the two nucleophilic sites, this site right here, where the lone pair of electron on the oxygen that would then be the most reactive one. And now, let's now move on to ranking our electrophile. So we have this carbon right here, that is a good electrophile. An electrophile is abbreviated E+. Plus. So E for electrophile and the plus sign to show that they are positive. So we have two electrophilic states here, the carbon and the hydrogen. Between the carbon and the hydrogen, which one would then be a better electrophile? And the answer, it would then be the hydrogen. And the reason why is because the hydrogen has only one electron. So when it is bonded to the oxygen, the oxygen, as the oxygen is stealing or pulling electron away from the hydrogen, this hydrogen right here is basically having an exposed nucleus where it carries the full partial part the full charge positive charge so therefore this is basically much more partial positive compared to this carbon and therefore this will then be the most of the strongest site of electrophile